Thank you, Dr. Ta. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm going to start off my presentation on smart acoustic cement sensors incorporating carbon nanotubes. I'd like to first acknowledge my co-authors before moving forward, uh, Dr. Stormon and Dr. Taha from UNM, um, Dr. Laura from Purdue and uh, Dr. Doers from Sandia National Labs. So uh, when we look into um, a global problem, uh, which is methane leakage, um, methane, which is a very important, the main component of natural gas. Um, um, leaking um, leakage of methane has been a global problem, and uh, we're uh, in this slide we're looking here at abandoned wells um, and some of the statistics. And um, uh, in 2018 alone, uh, 281 kilotons of methane has been lost in leakages, and um, that uh, creates very adverse climate damage and uh, environmental impacts. Um, looking into some of the active uh, uh, wells, and uh, a recent incident that has come out is in 2018, the Ohio disaster, where um, the leaking uh, methane that was leaked uh, was as much as the entire oil and gas industries of some nations released in a year. So uh, that has created a very uh, adverse impact, and uh, the in internal investigation of this particular incident led to the uh, discovery that high pressure and um, uh, the high stresses that had caused the wells casing and internal lining to fail. And uh, this was the result of that. So when we look into um, the background of um, cracks and wellbore cement and uh, the stresses on cement, the cement shrinkage and temperature and pressure changes, there are, uh, there are cracks uh, developing either in the gap and uh, the interface, the microannulus. And um, uh, typically in these circumstances, there are sonic and ultrasonic measurements that take place for, the, um, for maintaining wellbore integrity, for uh, constantly monitoring the uh, downhole conditions. Uh, but the problem is the cracks in wellbore cement are very difficult to identify. There's cement attenuation, and there are several other problems uh, that make the cracks difficult to be identified. And um, there is definitely a uh, need for advanced technology and uh, uh, advanced sensing operations for detecting cement cracking. So. I'm introducing um, a certain concept, which, which are basically phononic crystals. And uh, phononic crystals are um, uh, sensors or um, um, structures which have a periodic arrangement um, of, um, of different inclusions and their surrounding matrix. And the, uh, the highlight of these crystals are uh, it, there's a gap that is created in the transmission spectra due to a mismatch in the elastic constants of the inclusion material as well as the surrounding matrix. So when these gaps are uh, observed in the transmission spectra, these are called stop bands or band gaps. And that uh, these basically indicate no propagation of elastic waves. And uh, these are uh, in particular frequency ranges, depending on the geometry, the material properties of the crystal itself. So introducing this concept, um, uh, the objective of this study is to um, attempt to develop cement-based phononic crystals that demonstrate the ability to control phononic waves and exhibit these stop bands that we just looked into. And uh, the idea is that if, if, if we have cement-based phononic crystals, they have direct applications in non-destructive testing and advanced structural health monitoring. Um, for the crystals, uh, for the phononic crystals, uh, cement-based phononic crystals, the inclusion materials, um, uh, uh, very detailed research and investigation was conducted in this particular, um, into this particular um, inclusion material. And it was identified that uh, carbon nanotubes could pose as a very, uh, as a suitable inclusion material. First of all, because of their association with cement, and uh, they've uh, 
uh, the carbon nanotubes uh, as in cement have been known to um, cause improvements of the material, elastic and mechanical performance uh, enhancement. And also um, in uh, past studies, it was shown that MWCNTs have uh, proven to be hyper ecogenic materials. And what that means is they have ability to create high, um, uh, very bright reflections when subjected to ultrasonic waves. And that's uh, basically shown in these uh, pictures here, uh, where you have a maximum ultrasound signal uh, when uh, you have uh, MWCNTs incorporated. And the idea of this study would be to uh, make a very densely packed carbon nanotube inclusion material with low quantities of resin and solvent and um, uh, using the mismatch in el elastic constants between the modulus of um, MWCNTs and the surrounding cement matrix, um, try to see uh, what kind of uh, uh, phononic behavior ca these can exhibit. So coming to the sensor design, um, a COMSOL multiphysics was used to achieve a sensor design based on a very detailed design optimization process to determine the optimal filling fraction, meaning to say how much of the inclusion material should occupy the surrounding uh, matrix. Um, and it was decided that for an optimal filling fraction of uh, 0.45, wide band gaps were achieved and wide band gaps could promote the quality of the um, wave itself. So uh, we went with three millimeter diameter inclusion uh, cylindrical cells and uh, any uh, side of four millimeter uh, cement matrix and um, band gaps were achieved and three major band gaps were achieved from this design. Um, um, and the frequency ranges uh, are shown here where in the green, uh, gray color uh, area. So uh, coming to the sensor fabrication in the lab, uh, the lab scale sensor fabrication was um, uh, conducted with type G oil well cement um, with a water cement ratio of 0.4 and a super plasticizer was used. Um, the idea was to create a sensor with cylindrical holes and with a cement matrix. So the uh, crucial part was to um, achieve these um, cylindrical holes in the cement. And for that, we went with a 3D printed wax with um, a, um, uh, the distance between the cylindrical protrusions were basically the periodicity itself. And the protrusions were six millimeter in height and four millimeter um, and three millimeter in diameter like the design needs to be achieved. So the wax mask in the second step is basically impregnated into a, a cementitious mix um, in a silicone mold. And after the impregnation has been performed, uh, it was allowed to harden in moist conditions and demolding uh, was done after 24 hours. So the demolding resulted in the wax uh, being still present in the cement matrix. So for that heating helped in achieving a, um, a melted wax, which floats basically onto, uh, onto the top of the uh, beaker. And uh, ultimately the end product was a cement matrix with um, clean cylindrical protrusion, uh, cylindrical holes. Uh, this was useful for the uh, preparation of now the MWCNT's inclusion. So for the uh, inclusion material, um, a, a very dense uh, CNT mixture was the target. And uh, to achieve that, uh, uh, the resin that was used was MMA and um, a very, very high concentration of carbon nanotubes up to 40% was used. Um, the problem was uh, achieving a, um, a flowable mixture. So uh, solvent uh, was uh, used, which is a dichloromethane, which has a very high evaporation rate. And um, the procedure for uh, homogenization of this mixture was carried on using a three-roll mill. And this calendaring technique was used um, uh, in the past for very high concentrations of uh, MWCNTs. Um, you can see the setup basically consists of three rollers, stainless steel, 
and uh, they rotate at different angular velocities. And uh, the gap between the rollers is very important to create that shear uh, mix and um, uh, to create a more homogeneous mixture as an end product. And these gaps were uh, investigated uh, from past work and uh, achieved uh, to create this third picture that I'm showing, which is a homogeneous product of uh, the CNTs and with the resin and the solvent. Post this um, uh, three ca calendaring technique, um, there were three passes that was conducted. And uh, after each pass, the texture of the carbon nanotube mixture that was achieved changed. In the last pass, uh, there were needle-like structures of uh, carbon nanotubes. And um, these, uh, these, this last mixture was basically taken and um, mixed with additional dichloromethane to achieve a homogeneous mix that could be micropipeted into the cylindrical holes that were created in the cement matrix. So um, uh, several fills were made, first of all, after in the empty inclusion, after the first fill, there was compaction performed with a two millimeter diameter rod. And um, after the intermediate fills and the final fill, there was a, a very densely packed a carbon nanotube inclusion material and to to ensure uh, to to understand what kind of weight uh, concentration we are looking into um, uh, when we talk about this inclusion material um, uh, thermogravimetric analysis was used on uh, five samples of these uh, um, inclusion material and uh, it was observed that um, the residue was an average of 77 percent uh, of weight, which was attributed to the content of MWC in the material. Um, for the acoustic testing, um, sensor fabrications were required to be conducted in specific way. And uh, this involved basically uh, creating an offset between the transducer um, surface with the cement sensor itself. And for that, the cement sensor was embedded in a homogeneous cement mixture um so all uh, uh, basically a hardened uh, cement block and the offset distance was decided using the uh, wavelength of uh, plain cement homogeneous cement and the compressional wave velocities so the cement sensor was uh, uh, embedded at an offset of 15 lambda from the transducer surface um uh, to um, to minimize any uh, plate modes uh, potential interferences, near field and edge effects, this kind of uh, dimension, uh, dimensional setup was um, um, created. And to also minimize any formation of air bubbles or um, anything that could interrupt with the acoustic testing, uh, a pressure setup was built and uh, the sensor was embedded in a robust um, mold with surrounding cement and this pressure setup ensured that there are no air bubbles that could interfere with the acoustic testing. So for the acoustic testing, three cement specimens were uh, fabricated. One uh, specimen A, which has basically the cement sensor embedded in the homogeneous cement. Specimen B, which is completely a homogeneous cement without any embedded material or um, any sensor. Uh, it is a completely homogeneous uh, mixture of a hardened cement block. And the specimen C was fabricated uh, with a plain cement block embedded into the uh, uh, homogeneous uh, cement solid block. And the reason this was done is to see whether uh, these uh, geometrical parameters created any, um, any uh, results with the uh, acoustic testing and compare specimen A and specimen C to see if uh, the sensor itself uh, is contributing to the results or is there any geometrical effect. Coming to the experimental acoustic testing results, uh, uh, piezoelectric transducers were used to send uh, compressional waves and um, receive compressional waves through the long axis of the specimens. And uh, for these results that are shown here, wavelet transformations were performed for each signal. And um, uh, the special content of the signal was examined as a function of arrival time. And in specimen A, 
we see that there are two band gaps which are indicated by red dashed lines um, and uh, uh, the uh, specimen B and C do not have this presence. Another very important aspect was the second feature that was observed in specimen A, which was also absent in specimen B and C. And uh, this was a result of the periodic structure with these um, uh, carbon nanotube inclusions. And uh, the two band gaps were observed a uh, little under 600 kilohertz and um, 300 kilohertz. And B and C specimens did not show any band gaps. X-ray tomographic reconstructions of the three specimens were conducted. And um, this was also to observe any internal features of the specimens. As uh, expected, the specimen A, of course, showed the periodic structure, the periodicity, and the density difference between uh, the MWCNTs and the cement. And uh, specimen uh, B did not show any. Yes, doctor? Do you have one minute? One minute, got it. So specimen B did not show any um, uh, internal features because it's a plain homogeneous cement block. Specimen C did show the cement block embedded into the homogeneous solid block. So the internal features were very clear. One very special feature that was observed in specimen A was the debonding at the interface of the MWCNTs. Uh, there was uh, at the top interface, there was debonding and uh, while the bottom interface did not show any debonding. So to understand the effect of this interface debonding uh, that was observed, uh, computational models using COMSOL multiphysics again were uh, uh, developed and frequency response analysis was conducted. Um, so the three specimens that were modeled were basically the uh, specimen B and C representation with model one, uh, which is basically a homogeneous cement um, block. Um, then we have model two, which was specimen A, uh, with the periodic structure and no interface debonding, whereas model three with the interface debonding to see how these two differ from each other. In the computational results of uh, specimen B and C, there, were no, there was no wave isolation observed. There were no band gaps observed in the band structures. Whereas in specimen A, uh, we do see the band gap correlation with the uh, frequency response uh, function. And at um, certain uh, frequency um, uh, ranges, we do see wave isolation observed in the entire uh, periodic structure. Uh, specimen B, uh, specimen A with the interface debonding, which is model three, also showed um, the um, uh, wave isolation capabilities in specific uh, at specific band gap uh, frequencies, and the uh, frequency response function showed low transmission values, uh, just like in specimen A. So to understand uh, and correlate the experimental results with the computational results and uh, also to correlate between model two and model three, which are the specimen A without and with the bonding. We see that clearly under the uh, 600 and under the 300 kilohertz range, we do see low transmission values for both model two and model three. But particularly in band gap three, we see that um, model two with interface debonding has a band gap three about 530 kilohertz with low transmission value. But this, uh, uh, the model three with interface debonding had a shift in the band gap from 530 to just under 600 kilohertz because of this interface debonding. So uh, it is uh, concluded that the interface debonding in specimen has affected the frequencies of uh, minimum transmission values, but uh, there was no disturbance or perturbation to the band gap itself. And the uh, band gap ranges also were very um, uh, in agreement with the experimental results. So I would like to conclude um, uh, just uh, for the uh, uh, time constraint, I would like to conclude and uh, discuss the future work we, we, we're looking into three-dimensional uh, um, cement-based MWCNT sensors, uh, phononic crystals with three-dimensional uh, figure can uh, allow for more than planar waves. And um, we're using ultrasonic uh, spray coating technology and other uh, advanced technologies to produce this particular sensor. And uh, changes in stress, uh, changes in periodicity, and disturbances are also being studied uh, as an effect of uh, band gap frequency ranges. Um, so I would like to finally thank um, my team and also the uh, funding uh, 
organizations, which are the Sandia National Labs and US Department of Energy. And um, please uh, let me know if you have any questions in the chat. Thank you.